Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. Today's video, as the title states, is going to be a quick little review of all the books that I've ever given a five star rating to. Now, I actually saw a video of this already done by a girl named Steph Bower, and I thought it was just like such a great concept. I got to go onto my Goodreads and scroll all the way to like when I first started my account, which I think was like four years ago. So I will leave hers down below. I think from what I've seen from her channel, she's really into like romance style books. I think her whole channel is pretty much just books so I will link her down below so this is her idea I just thought it was really good and I wanted to do my little version I'm pretty much full range of the types of books that I like I'm also very picky I think the more books I read the more like strict I am in terms of ratings like if I rate a book a five star it is a five star like it made me intrigued and connected and just like it's a good book if it's a five star so I'm gonna start with the fiction books I'm pretty sure every Harry Potter book was a five star rating for me. That's pretty self explanatory. Harry Potter is a cult classic. Big Little Lies, I also rated a five star. Big Little Lies was the book that got me into reading again. This is actually an HBO series. It has Reese Witherspoon in it, it has Nicole Kidman, Shailene Woodley. It starts off with a murder, and not only do you not know who the murderer is, but you don't know who the murder E is. You don't know who was murdered. It's just such a fast paced book. They did an amazing job with the HBO series series like it's just so aesthetically beautiful and the characters are like on point it's just it's really good the next one is the couple next door now this one I read such a long time ago but I just remember it being so fast-paced from what I remember like from the first chapter I think like this couple leaves their house to go to their neighbors for like a party but they have a newborn but because they're right next door they just leave the newborn but then when they get back the newborn is gone the next one is a book called reconstructing Amelia this one is um uh, has a topic of suicide so if you're like triggered by that forewarning um, but basically it's about this mom who gets a call saying that she needs to rush to her daughter's school because something happened to her daughter Amelia and when she goes there she finds out that she actually jumped off the building and Amelia is like this overachiever like good student but then she gets a text from someone saying she didn't jump so the next one is another thriller it's called the good girl and I just remember being so attached to this book I was reading a lot of thrillers back then and I don't know why but this one just stood out let me read you the description because this is what makes it so intriguing and when I read it I was like it kind of like all came back to me and I was like oh my god yeah I remember that book I've been following her for the past few days I know where she buys her groceries where she works I don't know the color of her eyes or what they look like when she's scared but I will basically he held her captive and again it's a really really good story and it all came back to me when I read that and I was like oh my god yeah read it the lovely bones okay so this one has such a special place in my heart this one does have a movie that I think is really good but the book is like always a hundred times better right but it's about this girl who gets kidnapped and murdered by this like child creep creepy guy she like comes back and she's kind of like in the in-between of like dying and then being here on earth and her family's trying to find out what happened to her they don't know that she was murdered it's such a great tale of like family life like all of these characters you're so into like you can feel every single freaking emotion and at the end a lot of people i don't think liked it i'm not going to give away the ending but i think it's because they're not understanding like the full picture like you have to really be into the the book to understand the ending because a lot of people get disappointed but it's like so much bigger than what you're initially going into it for because when you read the back of the book it seems very like thriller kind of mystery but it ends up being so much bigger and deeper than that and i just i loved it so much little fires everywhere this one again is another really really good series i think it's on hbo as well with reese witherspoon of course it's a really good book about class so there's elena who lives in an upscale progressive suburban neighborhood and then there's maya warden who's an artist and single mom who has a daughter named pearl and she rents a house from the richardsons so an old family friend of the richardsons ends up adopting a chinese american baby and then a custody battle erupts that divides the town and puts maya and elena on opposing sides all these like secrets come out about each of the families and the custody battle makes it so good i don't want to give away too much it's just really good please please go read it that's a really 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 good book i read it during quarantine the next one is the alchemist it's kind of like a storytelling 
kind of book with lots of like life lessons interwoven between them. It's about a boy named Santiago and he travels from his homeland in Spain to the Egyptian desert in search for treasure near the pyramids and along the way he meets a gypsy woman, a man who calls himself king and an alchemist, all of whom point Santiago in the direction of his quest. So it is very spiritual, it's very deep. I'm not really remembering too much which makes me think I don't know why I rated it a five star. <laughs> Sharp Objects. Oh my god. One of the best books I've ever read, one of the best series I've ever seen. The aesthetic of the series, it's like dark, it's like creepy, the like cinematography, it's so good. The characters again perfectly represent what I read in the book and this one is about a girl who is a detective. She has to go back to her hometown where she grew up, a really small town where her family lives, that she had a really dark past. She cuts herself, which is why it's called Sharp Objects. All these like younger females are getting murdered in her town. So she has to go back and she wants to write a story about it. And she discovers all these crazy freaking things that you gotta freaking read it. You gotta read it. It is so good. The Girl Before is another one. This one I remember reading so fast. This one is a psychological thriller, which I love. So basically it's this really beautiful house, like an architectural genius design. This girl who just came from like a tragic breakup ends up taking it, but the architect has specific rules for living in the house. Like you can't have throw pillows, you can't have like photographs, any personal stuff. There's like rules to living in this really nice, it's almost kind of like a social experiment, if you will. And then the other girl comes and realizes that there's a death of the tenant before her and she's coming from deep personal tragedy and it's just a really like creepy, weird, fast-paced book. The Art of Racing in the Rain. I remember this book held such a deep, special place in my heart. I think I read it in 2018 or 2019. I forgot, but it was like my top rated book. I thought it was so good because it's a very like, life story. I love like real life stories, like ones that just make you understand the meaning of life. It has so many like aha life epiphany moments that are just so simply explained, which I love. Like it's not repetitive. It's a really good thoughtful story. It's about a dog. It's from the dog's perspective of this family and it's 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 really really good. Wholesome wholesome book. The five people you meet in heaven and the next person you meet in heaven. This is about a person who dies. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. It's like a really popular movie but there's like he works in um like a carnival his whole life and then he ends up trying to save this girl because one of the carnival rides ends up falling or something like that and he ends up dying himself and he meets five people in heaven that kind of reflect and go over everything that happened in his life um again like real life moments not like just bs stupid corny stuff like it's just really real i can't tell you the synopsis of the second book because then it'll give away the first but they're really good books the silent patient so good. This is actually the author's first book. I've talked about this so many times. If you guys are from my channel, you are probably like, oh no, Renee, I'm gonna, you guys have probably already read it, right? Basically, it's about this guy who interviews this girl who's a like prestigious artist who um, ended up murdering her husband, drew something, and then never spoke again. He's like interviewing her and he's like a therapist trying to figure out like what the heck happened like that night. And I think it's like years after she had killed him, like, but the ending, like you guys, the twist in this book. I have never heard of someone not liking that book. Everyone that I've ever talked to has rated it a five star. They love it. Where the Crawdads Sing. So I read this in the most optimal time during quarantine and I think like the era I was living in made it 10 times better because it's about loneliness. It's about like seclusion and isolation and uh, it is everything in one. It's like murder mystery, it's romance, it's spirituality. It's so much and again, there's a twist at the end, there's a twist at the end, it's so good. It also makes you feel so deeply. Like I love when books dive into the character without being too overly dramatic because when you know the character too much you almost kind of get annoyed by them but at the same time if you don't know them enough you're not as connected to the book this is the perfect representation of being able to connect to a character i don't think i've ever been connected to a character as much as i was connected to kaya oh my god the marsh girl so basically this guy chase andrews who's like well known in the community is found dead and they think that it's the marsh girl who the, who the girl that lives in the uh marsh Kaya. You just gotta read it, okay? Just trust me on this, trust me. The Kite Runner. I would say this is my favorite book ever, like hands down. I was really drawn to spirituality and like nonfiction books and like all about me, 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 make my life better, how to make more money, how to like be more productive and organized, blah, blah, blah. I have never been put in my place so much as I was when I read The Kite Runner. The Kite Runner 
was actually a book that I picked up because everyone talks about it. It's like one of the books that you have to read before you die and all this stuff. To be honest, when I read the back, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this book. It's like based in Afghanistan. It's a almost like historical novel. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna vibe with it. I waited to the very end to read it, um, but I had to read it because everyone talks about it. I'm like, there has to be something to it, right? Guys, I blew through it. It is the most real, raw, humbling story. It's about this boy who lives in Afghanistan and he lives a very like, I would say like elite life there. His dad has money and all this stuff, but then there's like a war that goes on. And this is like true, like this is real stuff that happens. There's also a movie that was really, 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 really well done. But again, book is always better. They end up having to go to America where they kind of have to start over again. And when you read from like a perspective of someone that lives in a country like that, you're just literally thrown into place. Like what the heck? Like. It gave me so much immense gratitude and like humbling. It just like grounded me. It is the most amazing book I've ever read in my entire life. You have to read this. Out of all the books here, read this one. This is the one. I'm telling you guys, it's the story. I cried. I cried. A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is something I recently just rated a five star. I'm not really into fantasy books, but um, this is great. Why? Because it is so much in one novel. There's just so much that goes on in the first book and all these characters. It's like a whimsical world. It really does make you escape from reality. It was so good. It's a mixture between Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Beauty and the Beast, Lord of the Rings, um, uh, Twilight, all of it together like is this book. It is so good and I know that they have a cult following so um, yeah it is Wow, it's a really good book if you are into fantasy. And then last but not least is Daisy Jones and the Six. This has been my favorite book. It's up there. It's way up there. It's from an interview point of view. So someone is interviewing a, like years later, this famous band that was infamous in, I think it was like the 70s, and then they broke up. This girl interviews each of the band members to figure out like what happened back then, their rise to fame, the breakup, all this stuff. It is the most humanizing book I have ever read. It is filled with real human emotion. It's just, I would just say it's like a human book. Like it's just so filled with feelings and emotions and life and it's not corny. I hate stupid endings. I hate fakeness in books and it's the most real book I've ever read in my entire life. It's tragically beautiful. It's just so beautifully tragic. One of the words, it's so, beautiful and motion filled. It is so good. So those are all the fiction books that I rated five stars. I will link all of these down below too if you guys want to shop around. Um, now onto the nonfiction books. Uh, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. This was the first book that I ever read where I understood, I would say, the deeper spirituality. When I say deeper spirituality, in terms of like you understanding your thoughts and how your thoughts are very different than yourself and how you can look at your thoughts. It's like the person behind your thoughts is how he describes it. And it's the first book that I read that just like kind of put everything into play. And ever since I read this book, every spirituality book is based off this book. Like this is the main book I suggest to read. If you've never read a nonfiction book, every single sentence in this book is so thought provoking. So you have to read it slow. Like it's just like bam, bam, bam. There's no repetition. It is the most amazing nonfiction book to date probably I've ever read. You Are a Badass, this was on I think everyone's list. This is such a good, again, real, straight to the point, nonfiction book. It's written in a way that you can understand. That's a, another pet peeve that I have when nonfiction books like just feel the need to use all these big words to try to like emphasize that they are like scientific evidence, like all this stuff, like, no, give me real, give me honest, give me raw. She is honest, Jen Sincerco, I think that's her name, Jen Sincerco, <laughs> it's her name. Um, easy to utilize realistic habits and ways that you can look at yourself and she throws in a little bit of spirituality in there it's just really it's a really really good book the happiness equation Ugh. again I love simplicity in books especially when the simplicity comes from nonfiction books because you have these like epiphanies when you read nonfiction books you have these like aha moments I have never read a more simplistically explained book in my entire life it's a mixture between like stories and lists and like poems it's everything in one every single page of that book was so beautifully done um and it is so easy to read which is why i like it 
yet so deep really really good the wisdom of sundays which is an oprah book so you guys know oprah i'm sure she has interviewed millions of people and insanely intelligent people insanely spiritual people insanely influential people and she has combined all those interviews all those people that she's talked to all those notorious people into one book with again very simplistic kind of like thought-provoking paragraphs sentences it's a really really wonderful book it's a great coffee table book um it's a beautiful book and it's just so it's just filled with so much it's like all it's like oprah's brain all the things that like made an impact on oprah is in the book life after life one of my favorite books if not my favorite book um ever it's about life after life so i'm obsessed with like near-death experiences i used to watch this like show on tlc as a kid if you know anyone or if you yourself have had any near-death experiences you can understand why i'm so intrigued with it there's some stories where like they cannot scientifically prove like certain things and there's this doctor which i like because when it comes from a doctor or a scientific perspective it's very real and it's not like la la land it's like this is a study. And so the beginning of the book kind of talks about like a lot about the scientific aspect of, you know, death. But then he interviews like, I think it's like over hundreds of people who have had near death experiences. All these people come from different countries, different religions, different faiths, different backgrounds. They have different experiences and stories. They don't know each other, yet they all have, I think there's like seven to 10 common themes of all their near death experiences. For example, a tunnel. A lot of them see themselves in the corner of the room. A lot of them see fa past family members. A lot of them see a light. A lot of them see like scenes of their life, which is why certain people say my life flashed before my eyes or fall the light it's insane to me all the stories so this is just more like a collection of the stories and the commonalities between all of them and their stories it's just really interesting it has nothing to do with religion it has nothing to do with spirituality it is simply just their experiences and it's the most amazing book i've ever read stillness speaks is another Eckhart Tolle book so a new earth is really good because it goes in depth you know stillness speaks is a little bit more um simplistic so it's like page by page like just a few sentences i highly recommend to read a new earth first and then read stillness speaks because stillness speaks you might be able to understand a little bit more after you read a new earth many lives many masters so this is another um book i think that is from a doctor's perspective and it's about past life regressions which i came across a youtube video about a past life regression and again it's like so insane how do you not like it just if anything even if you don't believe in it it's pretty crazy so basically uh doctors or therapists can hypnotize you which hypno hypnosis in itself is like what the hell but they hypnotize you and then you can see like who you were in your past life and like in the video that i saw this girl kept having headaches and she saw a story of like she was a boy who lived in like an alligator town or something like that and someone hit her on the head and that's how she died and you go through like your past life deaths but then you understand like why you have certain like anxieties or something like addictions and a lot of people recover from those uh medical issues or addictions from doing a past life regression so anyway i was intrigued and so i bought this book again from a doctor's perspective where he goes through this girl's like past lives and it's basically their intimate therapy of this girl's life it's a really 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 interesting book how to be yourself this is such a good confidence boosting book this one is about social anxiety but you can relate this to any sort of anxiety that you have the way that this girl talks about and uses examples about certain anxieties is profound like it is such a good book and it's not just like geared towards one specific type of person it's very like universal if you are suffering from any sort of confidence issues or getting out of your comfort zone i should probably read this one again but it is one of the best books i've ever read in my life like it literally changed my whole entire life and the way i perceive um my social anxiety can't hurt me by david goggins if you guys know who david goggins is you know he's a freaking superhuman he has been through iron man like he does iron man's every weekend and like he was in the what is it called not the marines um navy seal i think he's like done the test like three times or something like this guy is a freaking freak of nature <laughs> and he talks about some of the stuff like his mindset and all that stuff he goes pretty deep like he's also like a no bs kind of person which i really like he talks about how you can master your mind and how he's mastered his mind he will literally go to the limit of his body that is nearly impossible yet he makes it look easy i was waking up at three o'clock in the morning every single day to go run miles and miles and miles after reading this book like this book makes you do things if you want an action book 
go get it. And then Younger, which is a dermatologist book. He is a celebrity dermatologist. You would think he is into selling his products or selling his lifestyle, but he's not. He gives you, based on your skin type, a very in-depth understanding and explanation of how to create really healthy skin. He's Jennifer Anderson, Kim Kardashian, like all these like really famous people. Beyonce, I think he does for a reason, like there's a valid reason. And so when somebody is of that elite standard, you think of them as like really expensive or they do like unnecessary procedures. He talks so real. He talks about like food and diet. He talks about different types of skincare, like all different realms of skin. He'll give like skincare routines for specific skins. He'll give you an expensive option, a moderately expensive option, and like an affordable drugstore option. So he is just there to help you with your skin. He's just very, very honest and real. And I really liked that. When I read that book, my skin just like, I just, I understood my skin a lot better. So yeah, those are the books that I rated five stars. More to come, obviously. If you guys have any that I was missing, comment down below because I want more five star books. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Light it up, light it up.